step-by-step -step guide, I'm going to show how to run multi-level modeling analysis in JASP. First, let's have a look at the data. Um, I've got a um, number of observations, participants, the age of the participants, then um, this corresponds to an experiment that had as a between subjects variable time of the day. So some participants did the study in the morning and other participants um, in the afternoon. And then the other, the other independent variable is speed of presentation. And this is a within subjects variable. So participants went through three conditions, slow presentation, medium, and fast. And then the dependent variable is reaction time in milliseconds. Now, this is a, uh, an experimental design, uh, not the typical usage of multi-level models, but I show you how by using multi-level models we use all the data instead of losing data. So you can see here that this is a very large data set with 6,000 observations. So if we go down, so we've got 20 participants and each participant contributed with uh, 300 observations. So if we go to the last one. So the last one is 6,000, participant 20, and time of day, afternoon, presentation, uh, speed slow, and the reaction time 782.6 milliseconds. So, um, one important thing that we have to do uh, is the participant is going to be the level two um, component. So, level one is the number of observation. So, the the observation. So, we have six thousand observations, and and these observations are embedded within participants, which are 20 participants. So now participants is, uh, is a grouping uh, level. It's not, a, it's not a scale variable. So we need to change this, um, to press the left click of the button uh, in the icon. And instead of scale, we want a nominal. So each participant is is a person, it, it, the numbers don't, don't mean anything. Now look at how important this is. Uh, in typically we've got a one participant per row and that's the way the data is used. But that's the reason of that is that because we average the uh, reaction times of the participants, of, of each participant, for each condition. So in this case, because um, uh, the participants that perform the task in the morning will have three observations, one for fast, one for medium, and one for slow. And each of these three observations is the average of 100 reaction times. But from from 300 reaction times for each participant, we end up with three. So it's a massive loss of data. Of course, that means it's, a, it's a, um, a reliable measure, but we lose the variability of the data within each participant. So now, in order to solve that, then the participant is not the level one um, variable anymore, it's level two, so we won't have one participant per row. We will have one observation per row. And participant, we've got, it is repeated 300 times. So participant one will be here three, uh, 300 times, one per each observation. So if we get to 300, then 301 is participant two. Okay, so basically let's start with the analysis. We'll go to mixed models. And within mixed models, we are going to do the classical linear mixed models. We are not going to do Bayesian in this case. 
Okay, so basically the dependent variable is reaction time. And the two independent variables are time of the day and speed of presentation. And the random effects grouping factors is the participant. So now we are going to do uh, what's the effect of time of the day on reaction time, what's the effect of speed presentation on reaction time, and then we are going to uh, calculate the variability among the participants. Now what uh, you have to take into account is that we are going to do um, several models, not just one. So when here we have model, um, first of all the model uh, by default includes the interaction and we are going to remove the interaction. If we want to use the interaction and we should um, mean center the values which I didn't do. So we are not interested in the interaction in this study. But if you use interaction, it's worth to mean center the variables before running the analysis. Now, um, then we've got here random effects. Here it, uh, it adds a random effect for time of the day and for speed of presentation by default. So we are going to change these things. And just uh, uh, obliges people to use random, uh, uh, random intercept. It doesn't allow you to use a non a, ran a fixed random, uh, for, sorry, a fixed intercept. I actually communicated with the JASP team and I, and I told them that they should change that and they are working on that. So hopefully in the next uh, version of JASP they make this change. Okay, so um, in options we want a model summary, we want fixed effect estimates and variance or correlation estimates. And now what you can find here, this is the, these are the uh, the three tables that we are interested in. So first one is the model summary. So when I ticked in, sorry, model summary, this appeared there. And here we've got the log likelihood, which is a negative number. Deviance and, and, and two types of deviances, um, which has the idea of deviance that I explained in masterclass and then the AIC and BIC. Now, um, then we've got the fixed effect estimates. So we've got uh, um, an estimate for the, esti for the intercept, which is 775.6 milliseconds. The standard error, so this, um, in, in when we report if we report the standard error, it typically goes in uh, within brackets, and we are going to uh, ignore the, this, the other three columns. And then we've got um, time of the day, which will compare time of the day be and the mean of of uh, so the mean uh, sorry the the time of the day mean versus the total mean. And speed of presentation one and two, it compares the uh, the the, um, the factors, two of the factors against the mean. And these are the estimates. These are the standard errors. These are the variance, the variance or correlation estimates. So this was uh, by default, as I said, just includes the uh, intercept as a random effect. So um, we've got standard deviation and variance. There is a tradition in, in multi-level modeling of reporting the variance rather than the standard deviation. 
So, but here we have both. Um, and then we've got a variance for the uh, speed of presentation, the two dummy variables that we use for speed of presentation. Um, we've got standard deviation and variance. And finally, we've got the residuals variance estimates. So basically that is when we make the prediction for each observation, then the prediction and the actual uh, observation, the value of the observation, they have a difference. Unless this, uh, there is a, a perfect prediction, but uh, it rarely is a perfect prediction. So there is a difference. And this is the sum of all the differences. Or as uh, in the version of um, linear model in which we use a normal distribution to make the, the prediction of the actual observation, the variance would be, or, and the standard deviation is the standard deviation of that normal distribution. And, but as I said, in, uh, there is a tradition in multi-level modeling of using the variance instead of the standard deviation. Now, so these are the things that we need to report in each model. So the the fixed effects estimates with their standard error, the variance or, or random um, estimates, typically the variance, and then the residual variance for the whole model. Now, and also obviously the BIC or the AIC, one of the two, the, the not not uh, both are um, not um, the two of them are not necessary um, and uh, sometimes people report the log likelihood and the deviance sometimes just the deviance sometimes not even both either of those just the BIC or the AIC now in a sense to me the BIC is the most important or, or the AIC um, component of the model. It tells us, it gives us an idea of the of the likelihood of that model, but then we need to compare that with another model. So we need to um, create several models and then compare their BICs. So, for example, I can um, eliminate the random slope in speed of presentation. So basically, if I eliminate the I, I, if I eliminate the random slope in speed of presentation, what I'm saying is that that the the effect of speed of presentation in reaction time is the same for all participants. There is no variability. So we need to observe the B, when I do that the, how the BIC affects, and it looks like it goes up. Up, that means that if it goes up, um, it's a worse model. So, so we've got 58,036. So let's set it again. And we go to 54,000. So a, a lower BIC is better. So adding the random slope for a speed of presentation reduces dramatically the BIC. So therefore, adding the, this component is important for the, for the model. Let's see for uh, time of the day. If I remove time of the day, what happens with BIC? So we've got a 54,000 BIC. If I remove it, does it go up or down? It barely changes. So 54,024, let's see again, 54,024. And 54,024. So the time of the day component does not change anything. So we can remove it and we uh, we don't lose any... Um, the goodness of fit is the same. And then what we can do as well is to eliminate altogether one of the, one of the slopes. We don't use th that variable at all. So let's say if, if we remove time of the day as, as the variable, what happens with the BIC? It's now 54,024. If we remove it, it 
54,046, so a slight difference of 22 uh, uh, BIC points. Um, so it makes sense to add that variable. So time of the day, it's a variable that adds a little bit um, but it's, it's not great and 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 speed and uh, adding the random slope for that variable is not useful so what happens if we eliminate speed of presentation so at the moment we've got a 54046 bic Okay, so the BIC went to 63,226. That's a massive increase in BIC. So the variable speed of presentation is absolutely necessary uh, for the model. And that's the way we do. We, we report um, the BIC, the uh, deviance, log likelihood, and the estimates, the fixed effect estimates for each of the models. Also, same. This is this, this the random effects or variance components uh, are reported for all the models that we create, and and the uh, finally the residual of the whole model. So we do that for each of the models.